It's no surprise that social media has forever changed how artists get exposure for their artwork. Although it can be daunting to put yourself out there, having an entire world at your fingertips and maintaining some form of active online presence can really help you get the word out there about your drawings fast and reach more people than ever before. So in this video, I am gonna share with you five things that you should do before you post your artwork online. Number one is to sit on your completed artwork for a day or two before posting. Have you ever completed a drawing and excitedly posted it on social media the same day, only to wake up the next morning and kinda hate it because you notice like five things that could have been fixed if you hadn't been so hasty? That has happened to me before and honestly it's kind of embarrassing how many times I've done that at this point. When we spend hours and hours working on just one drawing, sometimes it can be easy to lose sight of our mistakes or gloss over the things that are wrong with our work because our brains get way too used to what we're seeing. So rather than posting your most recent artwork immediately immediately after you finished it, just wait a little bit before you share it online. You can save the work to your phone so that you can get a sense of what it will look like when other people view it for the first time, but other than that, take a break from it. At random points throughout the day, you can try looking at your piece again with fresh eyes and see if there are any mistakes that really jump out at you. I guarantee that if there's anything wrong with it, it'll appear a lot more obvious now. This is particularly helpful for me when it comes to anatomy and any potential anatomy issues, like perhaps you have one eye that is slightly wonkier than the other, this really helps point that out. Then you can go back and fix any problems there might have been with your piece before sharing it on social media. Similarly, it can also be a good idea to flip your canvas horizontally a few times while you're in the early stages of your drawing to see if there are any mistakes that jump out at you and fix them before it gets too far. Flipping everything forces your brain to see your artwork in a different way and can potentially prevent any problems from sneaking up on you right at the end. You can also do the same thing with traditional art either by taking a photo and flipping the image or just holding it up in front of a mirror and seeing if everything looks okay. Number two is to make sure that your artwork is high quality and looks professional. New people who are discovering your artwork for the very first time are more likely to follow your social media or contact you for potential art-related opportunities if your artwork looks its very best, both in terms of quality and how it is presented. If you're sharing your digital artwork online, it's important to find the best canvas setting in your drawing software to make sure that your final artwork always has great image quality. To prevent your artwork from looking pixelated or blurry, try to use large canvas sizes, well, as large as you can without compromising on the number of layers that you can use, and try to export as PNG instead of JPEG. Personally, I use Procreate and I like to set my canvas settings at 4000 by 5000 pixels with a DPI of at least 300. If you've exported your artwork and it still doesn't feel quite sharp enough, you can always add some additional sharpening either in Procreate or on any photo editing app afterwards if necessary. If you're taking a physical photo of your artwork, whether it is digital or traditional, it's always good practice to make sure that your photos look intentional and well presented. It doesn't mean that you need need a fancy camera or any kind of photography background, but ideally the photo should be taken in good lighting, everything should be sharp and in focus, and it should clearly showcase your artwork as the main centerpiece of the image. I take pretty much all of my photos with an iPhone and use the app Visco to edit the light, contrast, and colors before I post it. So very quickly, here are some of my best photo tips. Photograph your artwork in natural daylight if possible. You wanna make sure that the lighting is even and that there are no glares or reflections that make your drawing hard to see. Try to make sure that the photo is properly in focus. So that means that it should be super crisp when you zoom in to the main center point and it should accurately represent what it looks like in real life. If there are any lines in the artwork that should be vertical or horizontal, they should look straight and not distorted in any way. And finally, make sure that the background is well presented. Avoid taking photos with super cluttered backgrounds and keep everything neat and tidy. Anything that you include in the photo should be there to enhance your artwork and make it look more interesting, not detract from it. The third thing that you should do before you post your artwork online is to choose your crop wisely. When you're posting your artwork online, consider, will this particular piece look more captivating if I show the details up close or if I show from further away? Because social media content is consumed at a frighteningly fast pace, you only have a small window of opportunity to capture people's attention, and so you want to make sure that how you present your work makes the biggest impact. For example, which one of these two images catches your eye more? 
Is it the one from up close or from further away? These are of course both the same illustration, but give a vastly different impression when you see them for the first time. Social media is a great tool for artists to showcase their work because you can control what online viewers see and direct their attention to things that you really want them to notice. Especially with carousel posts, you get to decide what people should look at, what order they should look at it in, and which compositional characteristics and specific details you want them to focus on. You can also zoom in on particular parts of your artwork so that people can really appreciate the detail. Art takes a lot of time, care, and hard work to make, so you want to bring attention to the small things that can be easily overlooked. I definitely recommend sharing several images in one post that really show off the important aspects of your work. The fourth thing that you should do is to always add a watermark to your artwork. Taking that extra time to add your name and logo to your artwork before you upload it online may seem really trivial, but I promise it is worth it. There are obvious advantages that make it easy to trace your artwork back to you if they are stolen or used commercially without your consent. But the best reason to do it is so that your social media channels are easily discoverable if your artwork is reposted onto another platform, for example, Pinterest. Surprisingly, a lot of your artwork can end up places like that even if you don't post it yourself. I didn't realize this until last year when somebody messaged me saying that they had discovered my artwork on Pinterest, but I had never posted anything on Pinterest before. I did a quick search and found that many of my drawings had been posted to Pinterest directly through Instagram or through Twitter and without any caption or link. So without my watermark being on those pieces, it's likely that I could have lost out on potential new followers. The key for a good watermark is to make it small enough so that it doesn't impact or obstruct your design but also large enough that you can still read it. If you're like me and you make artwork that is often on a plain background, I would always recommend putting it on the main part of your artwork, whether that's a character or something else, because it makes it so much harder for people to just erase it and get rid of it. Sometimes I like to set my watermarks to overlay blend mode and reduce the opacity so that it is very subtle but still visible. Here are a few examples of how I have done my watermarks. The final thing that you should do before you share your artwork online is to title and tag your artwork properly. Although it might seem a little strange and perhaps a little bit too serious, I would always recommend giving your post some kind of name or title in the post caption. A short title that clearly describes your drawing can make it more likely to be recommended if other people are searching for that kind of drawing online, especially on search engines such as Google and Pinterest. Although the technology is pretty incredible, the only reason and I recommend this is because search engines cannot quite see artwork as well as they can recognize descriptive words. Furthermore, it can also help people connect with your artwork more intently because how you frame it will have an impact on how they perceive it. For example, by naming one of my characters Spring Fairy, it makes it way more likely for the viewer to associate this drawing with spring instead of summer, winter, autumn, or any other season. And if I didn't provide that context, this would be open to interpretation. Again, Again, this is very subtle and it may be a little bit pedantic, but if you were to change the name to Summer Fairy, I think it would change the feeling of the piece, even if it's just a small amount. The names that you give your artwork really don't have to be complicated. Some examples of names I've given mine are Mornings at the Flower Stall, Plant Pot Cottage, Girl in the Meadow, and etc. Similarly, when you're using hashtags, especially on social media such as Instagram and Twitter, you want to make sure that the hashtags that you use describe your drawing well. When I'm adding hashtags on Instagram, I like to use a range of hashtags that are both big and small. When I refer to big hashtags, I mean hashtags that are quite general in their description and have millions upon millions of posts underneath those hashtags. For example, hashtag drawing, hashtag art, hashtag digital art are all huge hashtags. However, you also have the smaller hashtags, which have much less people posting under those tags and are generally more descriptive and specific. For example, hashtag fairy illustration, hashtag iPad art. Although this is probably open to a lot of discourse and discussion, in my experience, there has been no right or wrong way to do hashtags. I usually do around 15 to 20 per post, especially on Instagram, and vary it between bigger hashtags, smaller hashtags, and also change up my descriptions based on the illustration that I am posting. And all of this combined is just to increase my chances of exposure. And that is all for the five 
five things that you should do before you post your artwork online. Before I leave, I just want to say that although these tips have personally helped me become more intentional with what I post on social media, posting shouldn't be overly stressful or overly complicated either. Putting yourself and your artwork out there for the entire world to see isn't easy, it feels very vulnerable, and you should be proud of yourself that you're being bold enough to do so in the first place. Getting yourself out there is definitely the most important thing, regardless of what steps it takes for you to get there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you liked it, if you found any of this helpful, and if there's anything that you do before you post online. I hope you all have an amazing day and stay creative. Bye!